Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This report is for trading on Thursday, May the 5th, 2016. You're looking at a chart of the gold futures right now. This is a uh, live chart showing you that the gold has pretty much leveled off and is pretty much flat at the moment. In the overnight market, we saw gold get down to uh, 1277 level, and uh, that's quite a, a drop from the 1306 handle. But it still remains bullish. We're still bullish, even though uh, momentum pulled back just a, a tad bit. The market is still bullish and still looks to be ready to take another leg higher. Uh, this is just what we would like to look at as a uh, a week of consolidation where the market takes a pause, pulls back, kind of takes away from being overbought a little bit and then in the following week we take out and break out into new highs. So you definitely want to keep your, um, your eyes open for uh, the gold market. Currently, we have support way down here at the uh, twelve twenty five forty level, and so the market is is well supported and can actually sustain uh, another pullback and uh, and still maintain its bullish stance. However, I do suspect that moving forward, um, this uh, this twelve fifty level between like I like I said before between the the 1280s and 1250 is going to be your buffer zone for gold just like I mentioned in the previous video so that's pretty much what's playing out right now we're staying in the, in the high end of that buffer zone going forward okay now switching our focus to uh, looking at silver silver you can see the pretty much the same thing above the Kumo cloud looking good here um, still quite a ways to go yet I think that the gold and silver is just beginning to power up and I think they're definitely going to um, be amazing going forward. We see the, um, the, uh, the short term trend line is crossing now above the, um, the longer term trend line which is very bullish going forward. Market seems to be well supported right now at uh, 1567. Uh, I believe that the buffer zone here for this market is going to be pretty much the same as the gold. Should be well supported between 1750 and 1720, with strong support at 16 even. So we'll look for this one to power up next week as well. We don't want to see um, the market pull back. And close this week below 1638. Though I mean, I'm sorry, 1683. As long as this market can stay above 1683, we're we're doing pretty good. All right, looking now at the uh, crude oil. As you can see, uh, last week we did close outside of the um, trend line resistance. This week the market's pulling back to it, basically. And currently we are uh, trading at 4525 right now the trend line support is at 4451 so it looks like we're going to close above that trend line support this week which will give the market another push higher next week to going into that $50 handle so this is definitely one to watch as well and uh, if the market breaks out above 4680 uh, then this thing is going to definitely gather some legs and will probably hit fifty dollars uh, by the end of next Friday. Markets well supported, strong support at thirty two fifty nine in the crude oil, which is which is way down here. And uh, you can see that the um, secondary trend line here at thirty nine twenty is also strong support. So this market has a long way to go yet before its bullish stance is really supported. Right now, it's still fighting for its life because sellers could come in now easily and, and beat it back down again because it's just, you know, trying to hug this trend line right here. Which is like trying to, to hang on a wall and you're trying to keep from falling. 
He's trying to climb up, and that's what's happening here. Market's going to need to be well supported and close above 44.51 this week. As long as it can do that, then it will uh, give more leverage to the bulls for next week. <clears throat> Looking now at the U.S. dollar index, as you can see right now, uh, this market did hit a new low this week. We hit uh, 91.88. And if you recall in the previous videos, I did warn that the 92 handle was in play. Well, we did hit that 92 handle and went and exceeded it and went to 91.88. So the US dollar index did exactly as I thought it would do. I do believe now that this 91.88 is going to be strong support moving forward. That probably will be the low for the week as this market tries to get a bounce above 93.69 um, going forward for next week. And I think it's going to try to close somewhere in, in the high 93 handle so that they could try to get back up to at least at least 95.78. It's going to really try to do it next week. I wouldn't be surprised if we do get here. And if this if, if the Fed can continue to intervene and keep this um, shorter term trend line from crossing below the longer term trend line if it, can, if it can succeed in that then this market will be able to power up uh, within the next couple of weeks over the next couple of weeks we should see a major power up if you look at this wick here you see this spike down what happened was two days ago the the Fed came in and rescued the dollar intraday uh, you saw a, a one cent reversal almost immediately off of the intraday lows. It was it was a sight to see. So this is the second time now in like you know two weeks that the Fed has come in and rescued the U.S. dollar and prevented the all-out crash. How much longer can it do this uh, will remain to be seen. But I do think that uh, we're seeing the signs now of exhaustion, that the Fed is exhausted. Uh, it's losing its power and grip over these financial markets. It's not able to do like it used to do. Um, it used to be able to just turn things on a dime with no problem. But now it's starting to struggle a bit with that. So um, the metals are still in their bullish stance, which is not what they want to see and they want to be able to strengthen this dollar while having uh, the foreign currencies continue to weaken. They don't want them um, to come in and, and compete with this dollar. Because if they start doing things with their currencies, then it's going to make it harder for the Fed to manipulate their currency. And then we're going to, have, we're, we're going to be in big problems. Uh, let me show you what I mean by big problems. Let's take a look now at the euro. All right, as you can see here, the euro currency has hit a whopping 116.30. You heard me right. It spiked out, spiked up outside of the Kumo cloud, and is bullish. And this shorter term trend line is about to cross above the longer term trend line and break out of this cloud. If that happens, it will catapult the euro back up to the 122 handle with ease. That's what they don't want to see. If that happens, then the dollar is toast. So right now the dollar is fighting for its life. Uh, this euro is quickly giving the dollar a run for its, for its money. A 115 euro is like choking the life out of the dollar. A 115 euro is analogous to a big strong weight lifter, power lifter, putting his enormous hands around a skinny person's throat and just squeezing with all of his strength without any resistance from the little person. Well, that's what a 115 euro is to the U.S. dollar. Don't like to see it. Got to try to stop it at all costs. 
hence you see the spike up above the 116 handle only to bring it back down to 11450 that's what's up right now so that's something to take a look at and consider going forward if you see the one the, the, the 115 handle come back in the euro and it spikes back up again it's going to be harder for the dollar to continue to recover and you can expect it to get smacked back down again strong support right now in the euro is at 110.76 alright switching the focus now to the Dow futures as you can see here uh, the market is still in a bullish pattern even though momentum has come off a little bit uh, strong support at 16.873 right now and I suspect that this market is going to try to rally again if not on take back Friday then they'll probably try to do it next week but because the market's been down all week I suspect that Friday will be a take back Friday and we'll see somewhat of a, of a bounce but uh, the market is bullish we did get this bullish cross right here and momentum's just flat right now alright so really no follow through even though we took out the prior week's low there's been really no conviction with that it's just been a little uh, just ebb and flow back and forth but nothing really to write home about so keeping our eye on the Dow to see what uh, transpires over the next couple days there all right looking now at the Russell the Russell is still still the weakest right now uh, look at that we're still trading below the Kumo cloud the the bearish train is still pretty much intact all right so the, the bearish position in this market is still intact nothing has changed here overall and on this one the momentum is starting to come off uh, you have support right now at uh, 107440 if that's taken out then it's a free fall back down to the the uh, the 900 handle we're looking at 93620 would be in play at that point as a target uh, to be taken out so the Russell is looking pretty sad right now uh, pretty much like the NASDAQ the NASDAQ was the weakest between the S&P Dow uh, and as you can see it tried to bullish cross here but then it's coming off so this is not looking good at all and right now 4208 we'll say and a half is support right now for the NASDAQ 100 futures and it's not looking good at all uh, it's looking like that wants to be violated or is in jeopardy of being violated anything can happen but if that is taken out there is no more support at that point I repeat if that's taken out there's no more support this market will be in free fall and it could fall several hundred points just be on the lookout for that I kid you not that is not looking good at all alright let's see here taking a look now at the bond market as you know and those who don't know bond price moves inversely to yield and vice versa stronger the bonds go up in price the lower the yields go okay well look at this this market is trying to power up again forget everything you see here in this chart because the bond market is the most manipulated market on the planet as far as by ours truly the Federal Reserve alright so they're making sure that these bonds stay powerful they're not gonna let that affect and, and crash down but so much because that will affect yields and it will affect interest rates okay they gotta keep those rates as near zero as possible a crashing bond market won't help the interest rates at all that will cause rates skyrocketing now I need to let you know that the chart is hilarious because look we took out support at 128.39 okay so right now this market technically speaking is pulse waving and it is negatively pulse waving that's a negative wave that means that you should start to see acceleration to the downside in normal circumstances, in normal markets, this 125.38 trend line support 
would be toast. It would have already touched it or taken it out by now and be well into the Kumo cloud. But because the Fed has an enormous trading account, the largest trading account in the world, it's in here buying and posting this up. All right. So it's defending this. It's not going to let it do but so much like back here. Let me show you. Back here, we negatively pulse wave, but a bit. It didn't allow it but so long. It stopped it here in its tracks. All right. Then we shot up, moved sideways, fell back down again. Okay. Took out the support, but it reversed it intraday here or intra-week it reversed it and put it back up again and then broke it out that's a lot of money being pumped into this market into this system I just wanted to show you that the Fed is desperate and it is trying to do everything it can to keep the house of cards up in the air until they're ready for it to come down or until they can no longer do it which it looks like it's getting to that point um, it's not the markets just aren't moving the way they used to with their manipulations moving on the opposite so that's something just to, to keep a mind mindful of all right let's look how the um, the equity markets are faring here's your notorious Apple as you can see it did everything I told you it was gonna do okay in prior weeks took out the major support here now here we are down here has not managed to even give you a 50% retracement yet. If it does, if it does, it'll give you back, get you back to a hundred dollar mark, and then it should hit resistance around 101.12, and then fall back down again. We'll see what happens, but right now this market is pretty much toast. It's negatively pulse waving, and um, that means further prices to the downside to go a lot more. I don't see any more support here uh, for this market. So I expect the the 80s handle relatively shortly in the Apple. Facebook is managing to stay up here at the higher end of its range. Hit a new high of 120.79 and um, holding steady at the 118 handle. Uh, this market is very much bullish. Has a lot of uh, long interest in it right now and is strongly supported at 102.68, which is quite a ways down. So this market can it has room to breathe. Uh, you know, first line of support is going to be at 113.82. Second support is going to be at 108.93, and then 102.68 is strong support. Trend line support is at 99.44. So take note of that. This one, um, I just see they're going to continue to push it higher. I think the bulls are really in control of this market and I see the 12079 in play I think uh, they're gonna try to push this at least to maybe 122 if possible by the close of Friday's trading we'll have to wait and see all right looking here now at uh, Amazon same thing as with the Facebook uh, it's trying to make a play for the 696.44 it is uh, positively pulse waving right now. You got a positive pulse wave in place. Market is really powerful right now. Uh, strongly supported at 540.64. And um, I just see this one trying to make a run for that $700 mark. We could see that as early as uh, a uh, Friday, a week from now. All right, here's your Netflix. Netflix is in trouble. All right. Right now, we got around 88.21 is support right now. If that breaks, then it's going to put this below the Kumo cloud, and then it's in free fall. All right. And it should be able to take out the $80 handle and easily, easily accelerate and get us to, to the $70 and $60 handle. Uh, rather rather quickly so this one right now is definitely um, not looking good if it takes out that support however a note of caution okay this one could fool you a little bit tell you why this market is still overall bullish okay 
the short term trend line is still trading above the longer term trend line even though it's they're coming closer together even if it even if it crossed here it would be a pretty weak cross unless you get an acceleration after the cross so right now technically speaking this is still support just like back here market came all the way down came all the way down through the the uh, long term trend line support but it was still bullish okay until these two lines up here cross, you're still bullish and you're in a Kumo cloud. You're in a Kumo cloud of death. So any price action you see inside of the Kumo cloud, you can just disregard because it could do whatever it wants in the Kumo cloud of death. And that's just chop people to, 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 to pieces. But you can't ignore the trend line supports. And right back here, you had a strong support at 107.06 and it gave it up. So this... Um, I suspect the same price action here. So you're looking at a possible twenty dollar, twenty to thirty dollar move, which like I said, if this eighty eight breaks, you're looking at it getting down to as low as fifty dollars. So be 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 an alert, be on the lookout for this one, okay? Alright, this video has been long in the tooth, so we're going to go ahead and cut it here and Remember, bulls make money, bears make money, but pigs get slaughtered. Take what you can, give nothing back.